Hi everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Um, I'm Cory and uh, my blog is at simulas.net um, so go check it out. Today uh, we're going to be talking about Windows 7 uh, and of course all of its new features. Um, new features, how it performs, just going to check it out a little and see what happens. Now I've got 10 minutes to do this and there's a lot of stuff to pack in so I might miss a couple of things but uh, let's give it a go. Alright so I installed Windows 7 on my desktop computer on its on a separate hard drive and um, let's talk a little bit about the hardware in this machine. Um, this machine here is running a Core 2 Quad Q6600, 8 gigs of RAM. This is the 64-bit operating system here to use all the memory. Um, We've got a Radeon 3870 as the primary graphics card, and of course, uh, the hard drive. Uh, as I said, it's a 5400 RPM, small 80 gig laptop disk, which isn't too quick for a reason, which is because a big complaint with the Vista is that the disk would scratch away all the time. Um, here's the Windows Experience Index. You'll see that um, they actually increased the scale. They said they were going to do that on Vista. They never did, but here they did, and we can see that the hard drive um, is limiting this uh, speed here. Oh, actually, here's another feature that we'll take a look at. This is because I'm recording a video, so let's not worry about that for now. Uh, but Windows is getting pretty smart, guys. Okay, so that's the hardware we used. Um, the install process actually went really quickly on this system. It took about 20 minutes from a formatted hard drive to get Windows up and running, which is really great. It's faster than the Vista install. Um, but otherwise, the procedure is about the same. Uh, the install size is actually very very small. As you can see, I'm right now I'm using only a, just about 11 gigs uh, for this for this system, uh, which is tiny compared to uh, what Vista Vista was. Uh, now things to note: I've actually disabled page file on this machine uh, first of all, and I've disabled hibernation, and there, that took away 16 gigs of of stuff on this drive. So it was using a lot more space before. Uh, I've, I'll actually make some posts on my uh, blog on how to do that sort of stuff, just so you guys know. Uh, okay, so, you know, other notes about the install. There was no welcome screen when you first launch Windows now, which is great because that drove me nuts before. Uh, drivers installed themselves automatically. That that was a real luxury. I mean, I put Windows on the system and I didn't have to install one driver, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so, that's great. Um, the codecs for playing back all your video files, all your AVIs and stuff, already there, so you don't even need to go download a codec pack. Ever, all videos just play themselves, and uh, so yeah. So that was that was some of the first stuff that I noticed in terms of, you know, just getting into a Windows 7. Uh, of course, Windows 7 has a few new cool low-level features. Uh, it's supposed to work better with solid-state disks, and there are tweaks here and there. Uh, they made it boot a little bit quicker. I've noticed that, and uh, there are other other enhancements uh, that they've made, but nothing nothing major. It's a little bit quicker. Um, of course, since the disk isn't scratching away all the time as well, that that in, that has improved performance pretty substantially as well. Now let's start getting into a little bit of the usability. Um, the start menu, that's the first thing you'll probably notice. The start menu is completely different. They've, as you've probably heard, they've changed it up a lot. Um, for example, here, this is a pinned uh, object on the start menu. And if I open this up, um, you can see that Firefox is running. It wasn't running before. This has basically replaced Quick Launch, uh, pinning uh, stuff on your start menu. And um, yeah, so if I launch an application, it comes up. Now, unfortunately, uh, I can't launch Firefox here two times. Uh, which, unlike the quick launch, uh, I'd have to actually go and, and launch it again like this. And then you can see that now I have my two windows. Let's just differentiate them a little bit. So now you can see I have two different windows. And it, it feels, the interface feels good. Uh, but unfortunately the start menu, I feel, has actually resulted in having to click more times. So just to, just to get to this Firefox window, they get grouped. I have to, I have to have to put in more clicks. Uh, it's not hard work, but it can slow you down a little. I, I, I don't like the start menu. A lot of people do. Um, you'll be happy to hear that you can actually set this um, to never combine anything, um, and it'll feel a lot more like the old start menu. This is how I like to use it. Um, but anyways, you'll figure out how you like to use it. Uh, we've also got some cool features like uh, arrow, arrow snap, which allows me to just grab this window, put it up there, and uh, it goes right up and bring it down and it 
restores itself, or I can snap it to the right, uses up half the window, and that's a really cool feature. It'll save you a little bit of time when you're working. Uh, we've also got Arrow Shake, which I haven't mastered. You're supposed to be able to shake these windows around and minimize other ones. Go check out YouTube if you want to see more about that. Um, Alt-Tab has been supercharged. Um, it looks pretty cool now. So now, say I have two windows open. If I go to Alt-Tab something, you'll see it'll uh, it'll look much prettier, and it'll it'll make all the other windows clear so I can see which window I'm actually focusing on. Uh, that's kind of cool. Windows key plus R, pretty much the same stuff as we're accustomed to. Um, and maybe uh, as you see me using the OS a little bit, you'll notice that there's actually a pretty fluid feel to it, uh, which is really cool. You'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean as we, as we go on. Now for the first real big segment, we're going to move on to uh, the, user, the features that users will notice and, and all the home users will probably see first. Um, first thing you might notice is that there's, not, there's no sidebar anymore. Um, the sidebar has been replaced by desktop gadgets, um, which you, you can easily just drag onto the desktop and put anywhere you want. If you want to use them and you're a big gadgets fan, um, they work really well. They work better than, than they did with the sidebar. It's a lot more flexible and it doesn't really force you to use up screen real estate when you don't want to. It doesn't really, you know, it, it's, it's a lot nicer. So yeah, ga gadgets have definitely been improved. There's no, no doubt about that. Um, which is great because n I don't think anybody really used them before. Um, other stuff, as we noted before, uh, the Windows Experience Index—they've—they've um, they've increased the scale. That's that's another uh, another thing. I mean, it's not a big deal, but that's good. Oh, speaking of the Experience Index, index on initial install, Arrow worked on its own. Um, that is to say that I didn't need to get the computer rated, the performance rated, in order to get Arrow enabled, which was a big change that I noticed. Arrow was there right away. Um, so this this isn't isn't completely required anymore. Um, now of course home users will also no, notice um, the backgrounds. There's a lot of cool new stuff going on here. Um, we can we can make changes and have different sets of backgrounds that are set up here. Um, it'll they have preset themes that change the window colors um, maybe these are a bit girly, but uh, yeah, I mean, or you can have your own theme. So, plus, in addition to all that, uh, you can actually have the backgrounds change themselves, which is pretty cool. Um, so they'll change over time. Uh, that that's a small improvement. It's I mean, some people will really love it. I I don't really make use of that. Um, now, another big change in Windows 7 has been the use now of libraries. So under my computer on the left pane you'll see you now have libraries and this this will probably confuse a few people initially because libraries aren't folders. Um, they haven't really replaced the documents folders. They're still, the documents folders uh, are still here sort of but but there's you see th these are your documents folders so you still have your my pictures and my videos and so on. These are still just folders, but libraries um, present a different way of managing your content. Um, for example, your documents folder isn't a folder really; it's a library. And what that means is that it actually—it's actually a view that represent, can represent multiple folders. So it'll pull content in from lots of different places. Um, and so it might be a little bit confusing. You might look in there and you think, well, what happens if I delete this? Uh, where is it getting deleted from? Well, you don't really know. It depends where the content's been pulled in from. So it'll allow you to aggregate lots of different things and literally, literally properly have all your documents in one place. But at the same time, it'll it might end up being a little confusing to some. Think of it more as as a search. Um, if you were to search a documents folder for all your AVI files or something, and then and then it gets shown in the videos view all your AVI files get pushed into there. Uh, that's that's kind of what it's like. Um, it's it's a it's a pretty big change in terms of how you manage your content, um, but uh, but it can be very very useful, of course. 